I think what happens when you hike a trail and everything seems nice and clean and clear and you've got this previously beaten down path, I think in a lot of cases it might actually create a sort of a false sense of security. Because even when you step off of that trail, you always know it's right there. It's like knowing the dirt road or the, the paved road or the house or the cottage or whatever. Well, it's just over there. How can we get lost? This trail that I'm on here right now is actually not so much of a trail. I'm calling it that because it's now my own trail that I've made and I've done it by using ribbon. And the reason why I've done this is because this is a trail that I legitimately got lost on. Not when I was young, not before I started training in survival, but last week. Now that happened to me because I let my guard down. I was overconfident, I was casual, and that's how we tend to get lost on a park trail or just off of a park trail. And then what ensues is often a horrible survival ordeal. But what I've done here so that I can continue to take this trail and I can be casual about it, is I started to blaze it, but not with an ax and a knife and cutting into the trees, because there are times when you're not going to want to do that. Uh, for whatever reason, you just don't feel like harming the trees in any way. You just want to mark it with uh, flagging tape. And that's what I've done. But there are ways to do this correctly as well. So here's one way, sort of relatively uh, middle level, um, I like to vary the levels that I put these. Sometimes I'll put them up high so I can spot them, especially when I'm coming up to hills. Um, and on occasion, I'll even put them down low. But this one's right here, tied off. I do tend to, whenever possible, I like to leave a little bit of this sort of hanging. The wind will blow this. And when you're trying to spot them coming from the other direction, that might be what catches your eye. Another method, tying one here in a loose tree. The branch blows in the wind moves the flagging, benefit of tying to smaller trees like this, if you only have so much flagging, is it saves the flagging. Smaller piece needed to go around a tree like this. It doesn't seem to matter how often I teach a skill like marking a trail. When I initially head out with people and I ask them to mark the trail, they still do so with great, great distances in between the marks. I think it's important to mark a trail often and make it obvious. The thing is, it's not about your casual walks in the bush. That's not the time when you need it. Ow! Oh! <laughs> it's about when you injure yourself. Darn rosebush. And you have to get out in a hurry. That's when you do not want to have to think about how to find your way out. Because if you're rushing out when someone's broken a leg and you have to think about where that trail is because you meandered all around the bush and didn't leave a single mark, that's when you're in serious trouble. Now if I come over here, back up a little bit there. All right, in front of me is a bit of a mess of bush, but the trail seems to go that way. To my right, there's a little bit of a clearing, and to my left, there's a little bit of a clearing. So why wouldn't I take those clearings, path of least resistance? Well, the fact is, the trail will go up through this bush, but I don't know that. So if I'm trying to get this way, I might think twice and go the wrong way, down the path of least resistance. But because I've marked this trail, all I have to do is step. Now here's, here's the difference. If I'm, if I'm like this, I can't see anything. But all I have to do is sort of shift my perspective and a little bit of flagging comes into view. I cannot overstate how relieving it is when you're trying to find your way on a trail and you can't see the way and then you pick up and, and, and spot one of your own bits of trailblazing. Maybe it's hanging flagging, maybe it's a blazed tree, maybe it's a broken branch, maybe it's a pile of stones and you know without a shadow of a doubt that's my mark. Your whole body just relaxes and you go, oh, I'm going the right way. I'm going to be safe. I can make my way out of here. And that's why it's so important that your marks make sense and that they're visible all the time. So from where I'm standing, I can look back and see two bits of flagging. I can look forward 
in this mess of trees and still see two bits of flagging. This is where marking short distances apart becomes important. As you can see, the bush gets thick here. So I can see other clearer ways that I might want to walk, but my flagging is here and it pushes through. See, I, I'll probably, I'd rather go around there because that's nice and clear and open, but I've marked this tree here and that must be for a reason. So I don't have to even think about it. I don't have to question myself. I just follow my flagging and I see that it continues on. This particular kind of forest is, from my way of thinking, actually a bit, of a, a bit more dangerous than other forests I've been in. For example, in areas that are much thicker, the trails are more defined. There's only so many ways you can go. But in a place like this, with all this clearing, it's just natural forest, but it looks like parkland. So the mind relaxes and you keep wandering. I look up here, I've got a straight up hike here to a spot that I recognize, full of rocks with a nice old tree and some big stone. I could have left this unmarked, but I know I'm the only one coming out here. This is gonna be an area I wanna come out and explore. So I also could have just put a flagging way up in that top tree and I honestly would have spotted it from here. But I've actually put three different bits of flagging just for clarity, just to be sure. Because after a while, when you get hiking and you think you're looking at the same rock or the same tree or the same valley or even the same plant or, you know, there's, there's an old fire pit here where someone, maybe hunters have been and had a fire. You know, I can think, oh, there's that fire pit that I recognized from before. Chances are it's not the same rock, the same tree, the same plant, or the same fire pit. Chances are, it's a completely different one on the other side of the hill. So now you're turned around and you're heading into peril. But if you've left your own mark that you recognize, put a bit of flagging up, well then you're good as gold. You see, I can actually hear trucks in the distance but it means nothing. Because between me and where that truck is, is probably, or are probably, two, three valleys, so, and a lot of ups and downs. I'm just up high enough that I can hear it. So there's a lot of illusions of safety that you can fall prey to, because you just think, well, I'm so close. The highway's just over there. Oh, my trail's just back here. Those are the things that lead us astray. And now the sound of the truck's gone. If I get walking towards that sound and get turned around and the sound's disappeared, where do I go then? When a forest is semi-clear like this, I mean, every way looks like the right way to go. And when the panic kicks in and you start doing the whoa, whoa, whoa kind of step here, it's about losing bearing to north, south, east, and west. We aren't going to articulate it as such. It's just a matter of you just don't know which way to turn. I mean, here's, let me show you with the camera. Here's more what it looks like. And the more you do that, you spin around, you're looking, you look back, and say, like, come on. And you start talking to yourself. Come on, make sense. Which way was it? Do I go further that way or is it straight down here? And you just, this is, this is what happens and this is the problem. Because often, and it can be the wrong way, a nice clean spot will speak out to you. And I say that like that, it's like it speaks out to you. Your, your lack of, of sureness, your fear, your panic wants an answer and wants an answer quick. The problem is that your panic is what speaks to you and it speaks to you quickly and it gives you answers. And the answers that it looks for 
is anything that is the path of least resistance. Down there is the wrong way to go, but it sure looks nice. I'm going back up. Even just doing what I did right now, I went off the trail just to look at this area. Now I know there's a mound here, but still, it all starts to blend in and when the sun gets high, it starts to blind you out a little bit depending on where you're trying to look. Now I'm coming back here. Now I have to cross my trail. If I don't have a lot of markings on this trail to get back on it, I'll walk right over top of it and keep on going. I have to be able to spot ribbon like I can down there. In fact, I can see one, two, three ribbons lining up the trail. Look up here and down and I spot a ribbon. That's all it takes. 30 second step off the trail and you can get completely turned around. <clears throat> now here, right here, is a place where I got legitimately lost. And I actually blazed my trail. I didn't have anything with me, so I made a marking. You wanna see it? I'll show it to you. You tell me if while you're coming back, you're not quite certain where you are, if you'd spot this right away. Yep, that's it. So in an area covered with dead wood, dry, gray, I decided to use a piece of that as my marker. Stupid move. I came down this hill. Again, at this point, I'm, I'm like, well, it's parkland, I'm on a trail, and I said to myself, the stupidest thing of all, all I have to do is go downhill, and I'll hit the road. All I have to do is go downhill. Stupidest thing I ever said to myself. So when I got to this area here, and I missed my little gray marking, and I look off to the right, it doesn't look like a trail, it doesn't look like anything. It looks exactly like all the rest of the bush that led down to this spot. And so I, I came and I overshot my right hand turn. And I ended up in the wrong valley, way over there somewhere. What I've done this time, and this is important, your trail doesn't always go straight. What happens if you make a hard right hand turn? And you know, you, you, you pass that right hand turn. It can be really hard to come back and find it if you don't have a lot of blazes in the trees. So one of the things I do is I take a spot like this and I put a ribbon here and a ribbon here. This is a big tree. The ribbons are easy to spot. And what'll happen is when I come down, I'll see these two ribbons and I know in my head, it's like doing a, it's like doing a reconnaissance mission. I know I hit the double ribbon I'm going to have to make a sharp right turn. And that can save me from overshooting the trail and then getting all turned around in the mess of the bush, coming back up, even losing the last blaze and now panicking and getting lost. I had no blazes, no markings, nothing. So I simply thought I must be okay because I'm going downhill. I was going downhill all right to the complete wrong valley. So this time these two Bits of flagging on the tree tell me I've got to turn right to get out of here. If I were to get turned around, and it's funny, you know, I've taught this so many times and I myself did not take my own advice. When I got turned around, I picked up my pace. I ran back up a bit, retraced my steps. Still, I wasn't sure which way I should turn to go down the hill. It was all downhill. So saying to myself, downhill will take me out, wasn't working so well because everywhere was downhill. I was on the top, what I should have done. And it's real simple and I'm gonna show it sort of graphically here. <sighs> take a knee, stop for a few minutes, sit down, wait for a while, compose myself is what I needed to do and I didn't. I was in a jogging kind of mode, so I was, I was considering an exercise. So when I came to the panic moment, lost right up here in this spot, instead of stopping, <sighs> sit for a bit, wait. Now the sun was going down in the sky. So I had that pressure pushing on the back of me, keep moving. If 
find your way down quickly before it gets dark. So it's hard to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Take a knee, right? The old soccer stance. Get down. <sighs> Slow down. Calm down. Bring the heart rate down and think. I was up there. I came down here. What did my trail look like coming up? Well, I know sooner or later I have to do a sharp right turn. If I do not do that sharp right turn, I am making a mistake no matter what. I must be. These types of thoughts will come into the mind and you can start to ascertain what it is you need to know. You can decide between all the bits of information what's going to work to get you out of there. So that's really a very important step to stop, to calm down. Often, if I lose the trail ahead of me, if I lose where the markings are, but I'm right beside a marking, all right, so I know I'm on the trail, what I'll do is I'll actually walk back quite a few feet on the trail and then try to look. And, and more often than not, the, the, the marking in the distance might show itself. You might go, oh, from this vantage point, I can see it. Then you carefully pass the last blaze on the tree, the last hanging bit of rib ribbon, the last broken branch, whatever it, it was, you carefully pass that in one direction, often looking back to make sure you don't lose it until you go, ah, there it is. There's the next one. When you do get lost, it, there's going to be a tendency to go, hey, to call out. I've been asked, how often should you call out? How often should you blow the whistle? If you're lost, for me, it's as often as you can, especially if people are out looking for you. Just blow that whistle, keep blowing it. It may, in the distance, sound to some like a, a bird, but you gotta take that chance. So I don't stick to simply the one, two, three, Anytime I've had to take people out in remote areas and we want to have a proper signal, if there's any kind of emergency, I do not say, no problem, blow the whistle three times and we'll know that's an emergency. I say, don't blow the whistle at all until you have an emergency and then blow it for all your might. And it doesn't matter how many times you blow that whistle. If we hear the whistle, somebody's in trouble. Hmm. See, I cannot see the next place. Oh, I've got my trail comes down straight. I've already made my big right turn. I should be staying straight and going downhill with a mound on either side. But I've lost my trail. I don't see any red. So now I'm going to carefully step forward, knowing where my, my back line is, always keeping that in sight until I spot another blaze, and there it is. Hopefully, this will continue on until I've made it all the way home. And in this way, by marking a trail that I make myself when I've gone off of an established trail, I can come back out safely and survive to do it again another day.